Although a patient and watchful species, the olive-sided flycatcher always needs one beverage quickly. Quick three beers! When you run it out of luck, need to get unstuck, so cough. When you rub against the wall and you cannot fall, so cough. The olive-sided flycatcher is an aerial insectivore that perches at the top of dead trees or snags to hunt for prey. These birds rely on forest openings for foraging and adjacent mature forests for nesting and rearing young. Over two breeding seasons, we documented 43 olive-sided flycatchers in the Akai and Finley watersheds, and the majority of these birds were found at cut block edges. This year, we are working in the highly disturbed Mesolinka watershed to further our understanding of the relationships between the species and natural and anthropogenic disturbances. We are documenting olive-sided flycatcher occupancy, habitat characteristics, and prey abundance and diversity within sites across a disturbance gradient. Olive-sided flycatchers inhabit natural edge habitat like wetlands, but are also common in disturbed habitats like burns, bark beetle impacted stands, and regenerating cup blocks. However, the edge habitat created through forest harvest may present an ecological trap for this species through increased predation or reduced insect prey availability or quality. The olive-sided flycatcher is known by the Seike Dene as a patient and watchful bird. Its unique song provides a familiar connection to nature throughout the territory of Seike Dene Nation in the summer months. The olive-sided flycatcher is a species in steep decline and breeding populations in British Columbia have declined by up to 69% since 1970. As a result, it is listed as threatened on the Federal Species at Risk Act. The causes of these population declines are not well understood, but it is thought that habitat loss or reduced habitat quality due to land conversion may be a significant threat. We surveyed sites in the Mesolinka watershed to identify areas where olive-sided flycatchers are and are not present. Then we completed habitat assessments at sites where these birds were detected and a subset of sites where they were not to document habitat features in these areas. So we use uh, these audio moth uh, automated recording units and we set them up and they record bird song at dawn. And then we do a habitat assessment. So we really look in a 100 meter square area around our recorder and we look at what the dominant tree, shrub, forb and moss or lichen species are. And we record those in their percent covers and their average heights. We do a wildlife tree plot, so that's looking at whether there's any potential wildlife trees in our plot. We're looking at trees that are over 30 centimeters diameter at breast height. So if there's any of these larger trees, we note them and then we note whether they're dead or alive. 
And then we also note whether there's any snags in the area, because those can be good perching sites for some birds like the olive-sided flycatcher. In future years, we will expand this work to the Indianica and Oswego watersheds. The results of the study will inform the development of habitat-based actions or land management strategies that could benefit this priority bird species.